the way I would recommend to be done is that you would maybe use a set of seven trays and you'd lay one tray down on a central tram line so that's your first tray and then you lay three trays to the left of the machine half ways out to the next tram line and then lay three trays on the opposite side half ways out to the tram line on, on, on the other side. Fertilizers are as expensive this year compared to last year. However, without the prospect of offsetting these costs given the current slump in grain prices. Tillage farmers should be examining every cost and fertilizers, especially nitrogen, is one of the largest costs to grow crops on farms. Switching from canned to urea could save farmers around 7,000 euros on 100 acres of winter wheat. Or to put it another way, if you can buy urea today for 875 euros a ton, then can should be 513 euros a ton to buy nitrogen at the same cost. Buying urea is one thing, but spreading it accurately is another, and many tillage farmers, especially on wide tram lines, are nervous about this prospect. You are listening to the latest episode of The Tillage Edge with me, Michael Hennessy. We would really appreciate it if you could listen, follow and review us on Apple or Spotify or wherever you get your podcast from. Getting the correct settings on fertilizer spreaders is critical to ensure it is spread evenly across the width of the tram line. To explain some of these settings, I'm delighted to be joined today by Francis Quigley, a machinery specialist in Chagas. Francis, farmers are nervous about spreading urea as it can spread unevenly. Is this to do with the weight of the product or throwing urea over the very wide tram lines? The important thing for people to understand is that urea is a very different product to can. Um, it's a lighter product, so it's less dense. So we all know that the, you know, the same size bag doesn't hold hold as much material. You know, but but each grain then is the same. Each grain is lighter as well. So uh, it, it's we need to change settings in order to uh, ensure that uh, we're getting um, the distance. So if you can imagine, I suppose the best way is the analogy I tend to use is a golf ball and a ping pong ball or a table tennis ball. You know, they're both about the same size, but if you threw those two same uh, balls you know, with the same amount of force across the room, the golf ball is obviously going to travel uh, much further than the ping pong ball. You know? And if we wanted to get the ping pong ball to travel the same distance, we'd have to we'd have to throw it with more force uh, in order to get it there. So how we do that on a fertilizer spreader is by making changes to the machine so it's it's very important that people actually make the changes to the machine to ensure that uh, uh, they give that extra energy uh, to the fertilizer to travel that distance but it is possible to do you know and 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 you know the modern fertilizers and and the modern fertilizer spreaders are more than capable of doing it okay we'll come to the fertilizers in a second so for urea in itself you can buy different types of urea you can buy granulated or you can buy Prilled urea. Does that make a difference in in terms of spreading width? Will one go further than the other? Yeah. Again, it's 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 kind of back to the same uh, issue uh, because of that lighter material. You know, we're we're finding the granulated material is easier to is easier to spread uh, because each grain is that slightly. You know, it's it's bigger. We're kind of trying to top of maybe you know, around four or three to four mil in size. Um, so it is easier to uh, to give that the energy to travel the distance. The real small uh, prills um, can be a challenge. And again, even wind uh, can be an issue as well. You know, with that lighter material, it's most, much more susceptible um, uh, to other influences. So, so it is easier, definitely easier to uh, work with the granulated uh, products. Okay, so uh, you mentioned earlier there about um, modern fertilizer spreaders, and some of them have lots of complicated bits and pieces on them, and they're and they're really good. And most of them come with uh, a, an online resource, whether it happens to be an app on your mobile phone, or you can log into something on the on the internet. Is it just a case of I'm spreading urea, I tap in the the bits and pieces that I want on the app, and it's going to come back with the fertilizer settings for me? And hey, presto, I'm all good. Is it as simple as that? Well, it's definitely the, the 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 first place we recommend people to start. You know, we'll say uh, each machine is, I suppose, they're designed slightly differently. You know, and the products are all you know different. You know, and and can vary. So. Um, the manufacturers have, you know, high tech test halls where they actually take in the fertilizer, they put it through uh, the machine in, uh, you know, in, in, in environmentally free conditions. So there's no wind or any other influences, you know, and I suppose there's no um, issues with the machine either. You know, they, they, they're using a, a new machine. So they're able to get the uh, best settings uh, for that machine. Um, and I suppose originally, you know, 
all that information used to be passed on through uh, booklets that came with the machines and these were complicated and difficult to use and just kind of put people off but but in fairness which you know you know nearly all the manufacturers now have a, a mobile phone app which and in fairness to them they've all been improving and making them easier to use like you know so yes definitely I'd be recommending people to to go to the app the first thing they need to do is put in their their own spreader you know that you that step is is needs to be done um only once though joe and then you'll go and pick the the fertilizer uh, that you're using and get the settings for that so it'll give you things like vein settings it'll actually give you height settings joe and it may even give you pto speed settings you know so um in some cases you'll find with urea products that you might actually you might actually not be at 540 PTO, which you'd normally expect, but you might have to push that maybe to 600 RPM um, to get to the, the, the wider working widths. You know, so again, the um, the apps are definitely uh, the first place to start. But, to start. Okay. Yeah, but there is it is perfect conditions joe you know? so again you know your machine may not be perfect joe you know? your fertilizer may not be perfect so there is other steps we can do after that but definitely okay. that's the place to start so you mentioned the bulk density of the fertilizer and again just thinking about the app is the is, is, is one urea pretty much the same as the other do they all weigh similar in terms of the bulk density um or do you really need to know what the particle size within that is like that depends depends you know again um like even even i suppose i often give the example uh when i do the practical sessions you know actually to to 10 10 20 products you know which people are very familiar with you know and mm-hmm. even within those the actual bulk density varies you know so you might end up with a slightly uh, lighter one or a heavier one and if that's the case you do need to adjust the vein settings but i suppose the big difference here is that all of the areas are in a very different category. You know, they're okay. much lighter material. You know, um, now there will be variations within those, uh, but it'll be variations. You know, at uh, you know, they'll be you know all down around the point eight, point nine kgs per liter. You know, whereas our typical fertilizers up around one kg per liter. So they're all lighter uh but there will be variations from product to product and also there will be variations definitely in in particle size as well so um look different manufacturers do use different systems some give you a little box kind of a sieve box where you can actually sieve the material and you can get the sizes from that some of them actually use pictures um so you 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 have kind of a, a set of cards um which are you know to scale and you literally hold those cards down beside the fertilizer and you match the the size that way like you know so again look they're they're for specific uh machines you know so uh, you just need to check and see what's available uh for your particular machine okay so if if a farmer is lucky enough they buy a certain type of fertilizer type of urea comes through the door and um they look up on their app and they find that particular uh brand name if you like of the of the of the urea there and it gives them all the nice settings hey presto that's pretty easy away they go that's great however in lots of cases i suppose maybe with urea coming from different sources over the last couple of years that mightn't just always be the case and again going through what you were talking about there a second ago getting a sieve box which is a box that div- a small little box that divides up um the fertilizer into various different uh particle sizes if you have that and you have the density of it and the very sort of different parameters of it, uh, can it or is it possible to use all of that information with some of these apps or with some of the material that, that, that the manufacturers give the farmer in order to come up with the settings for that particular type of fertilizer? It is. But it's it's, okay. it's only possible with certain machines. So okay. certain manufacturers uh, certainly will allow you to actually, and and some of them will actually supply you with that little sieve box, Joe. You know? So right. like you said, Joe, you, know, you basically fill one compartment, and, and and it's just got three or four sieves inside it, and it will divide up and get the uh, give you the actual granule size, Joe. You know? And that's then divided up into four different percentages, Joe. You know? So we've uh, a percentage which are maybe uh, less than two mil, Joe, you know? and then the other very sizes up along up to you know percentages that are over maybe four and a half mil um you can put that information so certain manufacturers in the in the phone app or in their online tools uh, will actually allow you to put that information in uh to the to their um app and it will actually find 
the fertilizer then that best matches that. So so a, a similar fertilizer or a similar size fertilizer and, and weight of fertilizer that they've actually put through their test holes. So in other words, you're kind of matching your product directly back to something they've actually put through their test holes. Do you know? So yes, it is possible with certain manufacturers, but not all manufacturers allow you to, to use that. Do you know? So there's going to be three or four yeah, and some of those, Francis, would, would I think some of those manufacture the some of the the fertilizer spreader manufacturers will ask for well, where did the fertilizer come from and who made that fertilizer? That'd be the question that they probably would ask to the farmer. Is it possible to get that information? Do, do you know from some of the some, some of the distributors out there? It uh, can be a challenge because it's gone through so many hands. Do you know, okay. so look, uh, the reality is if you go to your your, your local salesman behind the counter, uh, he's probably going to struggle. Now, look, uh, he can, if you push him, he can probably uh, go back through a chain of people like, you know, but uh, the reality of getting getting that information is probably going to be pretty slim. I think your best option is to try and either... Um, work with the the app information that's there joe i know what we are encouraging you know even farmers to put pressure back through the merchants if the if the information is not in the app and like we've, we've certainly been putting a lot of pressure onto the uh the importers and that you know uh, and and retailers to to get their fertilizer tested and to to keep the um to keep the apps up to date you know so it's up to the actual importers that are importing that fertilizer to send their products to the you know five or six spreader manufacturers um in order to get the fertilizer tested in their machines you know so um it's definitely something that um um look it's 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 always a challenge but um for but it is something that we're certainly keeping a lot of pressure on on merchants to do like you know. okay well so uh, let, let's just take a scenario where the farmer has the urea uh, the urea is in the machine managed to get um either the exact um information from the app that gives the settings for to to, to spread out the the the, the urea to the quick to correct with um or something that's maybe close enough is that kind of it? Is is that just just chuck it in and away you go? And or, or is there is there another step that probably needs to be done as well? No, I look. We we, we really recommend um, uh, farmers. I suppose there's two things really. One is calibration of the machine, so that's actually get the flow rate. You know, uh, to make sure that the actual rate out of the machine is correct. And again, you know, people say often say, come back to me, oh God, you know, I use the app settings, you know, for for this fertilizer, and it worked perfect. You know, the last day I did it, you know, I went out a couple of weeks later and went spreading, you know, and I used the very same settings, and I came back with material left in the spreader, you know. Sure. Yeah. Um, now the thing that I find out from is I said, you know, when you open that bag the first day it arrived in the yard, it was probably real fresh fertilizer flow flowed, you know, very quickly out of a small hole in the bottom of the bag. You came yeah. back a couple of weeks later, you opened the same bag and you found you maybe had to cut the whole bottom out of the bag, Joe, you know, uh, because it was gone slightly dead. Joe. You know, um People forget then that you know it's coming out through a small opening in the bottom of the machine. You know, so calibrating the machine uh, is is I suppose the first step. You know, so you'd actually have to normally the way that's done is you take the disc off, uh, put a bucket under the machine, run the machine for 30 seconds, collect that fertilizer and weigh it and compare it to uh, the weight that should be coming out of that. So how many kgs per minute? Again, that information is in the app. But the next stage then is actually in the field. You know, so uh, it's it's the actual spread pattern in the field so doing a tray test in the field is the only way to check to make sure that the uh, fertilizer is 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 uh, covering the the correct uh, working weight and to be honest you know the calibration bit i've mentioned if you have a gps spreader it's doing that every couple of seconds you know so it's constantly weighing it's adjusting the the opening in the bottom of the machine uh based on the weight that's leaving the machine but uh the gps spreader or your your regular spreader is not able to um determine where the fertilizer is going once it's landed on the disc you know so uh we do need to set out uh, or to do a tray test in the field in order to actually um in order to determine that it's actually been spread evenly across the, the, the full work and width. And again, like, you know, that comes down to getting your vein settings right. But also, you know, even on a simpler level, you know, find travel around the country, like the quality of veins, uh, uh, it's something, you know, 
those six or eight inches of, of steel, you know, uh, are vitally important. It's a wearing part on the machine. So it, it is, you know, it's of the utmost importance that people would uh, check the veins, make sure the veins are not worn or damaged. You know, I've often gone out to places and see there's nearly an inch missing off the end of the veins, you know, or that they're very badly rippled. You know, that's going to have a, a detrimental effect on the way the fertilizer flows. So just just, just go back, Francis, a second to the, to the tray test out in the field. So if I'm right in saying the tray test is basically you put down uh, two or three uh, trays uh, in the middle of the tram line, some directly behind the tram line, and on the other side as well, on in in the middle of the tram line, and you travel up and down between that. Is 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 it good enough just to have one tram line set out, or do you need kind of two tram lines set out, or do you need to do two passes over that, or what's the what's the best way of of completing that properly? Again, look, there's different uh, methods used, and again, you know, each you know some some manufacturer might come out and do it uh, with a set of trays, maybe five trays on one side of the machine. So you'd have one tray directly under the the tram line, and then five or four more trays going either left or right of the machine. The way I would recommend uh, it to be done is that you would maybe use uh, a set of seven trays, um, and you'd lay one tray down on a central tram line, so that's your first tray and then you lay three trays to the left of the machine half ways out to the next tram line you know and then lay three trays on the opposite side half ways out to the tram line on 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 the other side then you do what you need to do is you need to do three passes so you need to do a pass down tram line one up through your central tram line and the pass down through the the third tram line uh by doing that what we're actually doing is we're actually checking both sides of the machine. Um, so uh, if if you only lay them to one side, you'll 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 actually only be checking one disc because you know as you come down along uh, a field, it's your left hand side maybe disc that's that's spreading. If you turn around and travel back up, uh, it's actually you know, you've turned around, so it's actually the left hand disc is throwing the fertilizer back again. So it is important to to lay out, we'll say, on both sides of the machine to do a full uh, to get a full spread pattern. And then you, you you put those into a kind of a, do you weigh them or you put them into a flask or a visual thing or what do you do? Yeah, generally those uh, kits come with a set of test tubes, literally, which are kind of, you know, real uh, tall, thin tubes. Um, right. uh, you basically take the fertilizer from each tray, push it into uh, the individual. You know, if you have seven trays, you'll have seven uh, test tubes. You'll uh, fill each, uh, just drop the fertilizer from each tray into those test tubes. And then visually all you're doing is looking to see that they're level uh, across the the full width. And in terms of, is there any simple um, things farmers should look out for if a farmer figures out from that visual that it's actually thrown a bit too much in the middle of the tram line or maybe it's thrown a bit too much on the opposite side of it, it's thrown too much uh, just behind the tractor. Is Is there something there that tips you might be able to give people? It is important, I suppose, first of all, maybe we haven't mentioned it, is you know, the height of the machine is important. So again, making sure that the machine is actually at the right uh, working height. And again, look at most of the apps will actually give you that information. And it's uh, the height is is measured over the top of the crop. So that's something people you know, often don't uh, take in consideration. They maybe measure it in the yard. You know? So actually what I've seen some people do is is maybe uh, hang a chain or, or bolt a chain onto the front of the machine, um, uh, which is at the, at the correct height. You know? and you can see that then rubbing the top of the crop you know so you you can may easily make adjustments then from the seat of the cab um but the, the i suppose the more difficult thing is is getting vein settings right you know so it, it's 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 adjusting the veins but if you can imagine you know if if i take a um a vein it's, it's a bit like you know if you hold a, a maybe a, a piece of a board at uh, horizontally you know if, it, if, that, if i have that that 45 degrees slope uh, and i drop fertilizer on it it's going to run off that uh, slope very quickly you know so the length of time the fertilizer spends on the vein is what gives it the energy you know so if that slope is at 45 degrees uh, it's going to run off very quickly if we increase that back up closer to, to horizontal uh, the fertilizer is going to spend longer on uh, the vein um, and it's going to give it more energy and that's going to throw it further so you know so basically tightening uh, in that um, that vein setting is going to give it the extra energy. 
there also tends to be a long vein and a short vein on the machine. So again, the long vein is the vein that's actually uh, tends to be covering the, the outer extremities, Joe, you know, and the short vein is the one that's covering uh, the area behind the machine, Joe. You know. So again, uh, making those adjustments just to understand, I suppose, that basic principle. But again, just make small make small adjustments. But again, you need to do another trade test then, you know, to make sure that your adjustments are are, are correct, like. Okay, so finally, um, uh, Francis, just a, a, where a farmer is fairly happy, the, it, it seems to be putting out the right amount. The flow is pretty good, as you were saying, you're saying before, and it seems to be spreading it relatively easily. Uh, goes out and spreads fertilizer for a day or two days, uh, and then he's come back for the next round of fertilizer using something similar, uh, maybe in a few weeks' time. Would you be happy enough that the farmer would? be okay to go at that again or does, does the farmer really need to go through all those tests again really what we'd be looking for um typically the farmers would be hoping that they would do you know the calibration and the and the trade test uh once per season per product joe you know, so now with contractors that are spreading a lot more fertilizer joe you know, they should have a set of trays going around with them and they should be doing it regularly joe you know, because they're putting out huge volumes in comparison but with a farmer joe you know, certainly with the trade tests uh i'd be recommending joe you know, once per product per season would be enough joe you know. now the calibration uh, you know, that's something that the, you know, would need to be watched. You know, as I say, depending on where the fertilizer is stored, if it's flowing differently out of the bag into the fertilizer, then it's going to flow differently out of the hopper, Joe, you know, at the bottom of the machine. So that's something, Joe, you know, that he may need to do a bit more often, Joe. You know, um, but uh, as I say, it just depends on the volume of material that's been sprayed, Joe. You know, but typically with a farmer, that once per season on the trade test would be fine. Be fine. Francis, you're very good. Thanks very much. There's a huge amount of information there for anybody listening and there's certainly a, a little bit of testing to be done on every farm to make sure there's no stripes at the end of the season because there's nothing as bad i think as as, a, as any farmer looking into it or thinking about his neighbors looking down onto his field and his stripy green and, and and light green it's uh it's something that can cost a lot of money at the end of the day francis thanks very much um and delighted you could join us again thanks michael so that's it for this week and my thanks to francis for joining me on the podcast Next week, we'll take a closer look at supplying nutrients to crops while reducing costs. Finally, don't forget if you enjoyed the podcast and recommend it to a friend or colleague. And as always, rate, review and follow on Apple Podcasts or Spotify so you never miss an episode. And for more information, go to chagas.ie. I'm Michael Hennessy. Thanks for listening. And I'll be back next week with more tillage news and advice.